Hello, future loopers, 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 loopers of the world. Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be exploring loops, both for loops and while loops, and how we can use them to impact our LEDs. To start us off, we'll look at our wiring diagram that we left lesson three with. Here, we have a single LED wired up to pin number eight through a 220 ohm resistor. I'm going to bring in a second LED to this circuit. So from pin 12 on my Arduino, I'm going to come up to my breadboard row here, make this wire yellow. Then I'm going to bring over a 220 ohm resistor to bridge the gap on my breadboard. And finally, a yellow LED with the long leg connected to the resistor. And then a wire headed to my ground channel. So here we'll see the completed circuit that we're going to use for lesson four, where we're going to start playing around with for loops. Now let's head over to the code. So here we are in the code. All I've done so far is click on new sketch. So first I'm going to rename this sketch. This is lesson number four. All right, now let's get started with our code. What are we going to be doing in lesson four? We're going to be controlling two LEDs using loops. First things first, we're going to set up some variables for the pins that we've plugged our LEDs into. There we go. We have variables set up for green pin and yellow pin. We show that this variable is linked to eight, because that's where I plugged in my green LED, and yellow pin is linked to pin 12, which is where I set up my yellow LED on my wiring diagram. Now we're gonna jump into our setup function for the code that's only gonna run one time. In here, we need to set up our LEDs as output pins. You'll notice that when I do this, I use green pin and yellow pin as opposed to the numbers eight and 12. And this is so that if I ever needed to change my wiring for whatever reason, I would only have to change it once at the top of my file as to which pin it's plugged into and the rest of my code would remain flexible. Next, because we're gonna be using the serial monitor to help us understand what's happening, we're gonna set up our serial. So our serial is set up and ready to be used in our function. Now it's time to jump down to the loop function. As you know, the way Arduinos work, the setup function will run one time and the code inside the brackets of the loop function will run repeatedly, 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 over and over and over again until the Arduino no longer has power. What we're gonna do is within the loop function, we're actually gonna create our own loops uh, that will run as many times as we need them to. So we're gonna talk about two different kinds of loops. The first kind of loop we're gonna talk about is called a for loop. So I'm gonna type in the code and then we're gonna go through it. Let's look a little bit at what we have. Creating a for loop that will loop four times. Now I chose four times for this particular lesson. Obviously that's something that we can change as well for the yellow LED. That's where we're gonna start. It's this line of code here that's important. This is the initialization statement for the for loop. Let's go through it one step at a time. For with regular parentheses wrapping around the whole rest of the statement. That indicates to Arduino that this is going to be a for loop. We start off with an initial value. So we have to have some type of a tracking variable that helps us understand how to loop. So I start by creating an integer value, which is a non-decimal number. I call it i, and I start it at zero. All right, so this says we create an integer called i that starts at zero. Then we have a semicolon. This indicates we're ready to move on to the next condition. The next condition is called the end condition. This is the thing that's gonna make the for loop stop looping. And it says, continue to loop as long as i is less than four. As long as i is less than four, the code inside of my loop will continue to run. Then we say, do you want something to happen after each loop? So after each execution of the for loop, I want i to iterate by one. We do this with i++. And this means that the value of i will increase by one after each time the for loop executes. Before we do anything else, let's just watch what happened. So I'm just going to put in a serial.print line i statement. And this way when I run it, I can just see what's happening inside of my loop. See if you can guess what you think is going to happen. Even though I know it's not the code I'm going to use, I still need my Arduino plugged into the computer at this point. Once my Arduino is plugged in, I'll see the Arduino show up at the top and I can push this code out to the Arduino. Now I know that this isn't the code that we want to light our LEDs, but it's gonna help us do some debugging and understanding what's happening inside of our loop. Now that the code's pushed out, let's go to the serial monitor and have a look. It's a bit chaotic, but what we see is that it's the number 0, 1, 2, 3 repeating over and over and over again. So why is it repeating so many times if we only wanted it to repeat four times? Well, that's because this loop might only run four times, printing the number 0, 1, 2, 3. But remember, this loop is inside of my loop function, which is gonna repeat forever. So once this finishes running four times, 
my loop function ends, starts over, and this whole for loop starts anew. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit what's happening in there. Let's add something a little more interesting and let's get our LEDs involved here. So let's put in a digital right, a delay, a digital right, and a delay, just like we would typically do to blink an LED. So there we go. And that's code we should be familiar with. It's going to blink the LED on and off for one second. So what should happen in this loop is four times our yellow LED should blink on and then off. Let's have a look and see if it actually works. What we'll see if we did it right is actually a yellow LED that's going to keep blinking on and off for one second intervals, but it's not going to stop after four because it's inside that loop function. So it's going to keep blinking on and off repeatedly. We'll have to add in a little bit more code so we can see that separation. Couple of quick notes about the for loop. We can change these parameters as to when the loop is going to stop executing. We can change the iterator. How fast is the value going up? Is it going up with a multiplier, with an addition? Is it going down with a subtraction? All of these are up for modification. We can also use variables in place of some of these numbers to give us even greater control over how something loops. So this is just a very brief introduction to the structure of a for loop. In order to look at the next type of loop, we need to first create a variable. And the next type of loop is called a while loop. And it's very similar to a for loop, except that we have to manually control the variables and the iterations. It's only going to manage the condition for us. So I'll show you what I mean. What I've done here is I've created a variable called j, which I've set to zero. And you'll notice I've done this myself. This is not included in the while loop statement. Then I start my while loop. All I put inside the parentheses is a condition of success. j is less than three. As long as that is true, the code inside the while loop will run. So let's do our green LED and let's do another blink code. Inside my while loop now, I have my digital write for my green pin, my delay, my green pin, my delay. This looks beautiful. I wonder what would happen if we push this code out right now. Let's try it and see. What I'm thinking is we're gonna get the yellow LED blinking four times from our for loop and then our green LED is gonna start to blink. Now my green LED just started blinking. But uh oh, it's not stopping after two blinks. In fact, it's not stopping at all. Let's see if we can figure out why that is. If we trace our code, we enter our loop function. Our for loop function begins. This code runs four times. When it's done running, I reach this point of my code. I now create a variable, set it equal to zero, and I check while that variable is less than three, which it is, run this code until such a time that j is not less than three. But see, here's the problem. Nowhere in this code does j get changed in value, which means j is never going to be bigger than three. So j is never going to cause my while loop to stop. This is where I said we're in charge of manually controlling the variable and the iterator. If I add in the line J++ with a semicolon, after it runs my blink of my LED, it's going to increase J's value by one. And that will let it run. Then it will end. Then the loop function will end and the whole thing will start over. Let's try that. So there's our yellow LED blinking four times, three and four. And now our green LED should blink three times. One, two, three. And if we're right, it goes back to yellow. Hey, it's working. What happened is our green pin is now blinking three times for j equals zero, j equals one, and j equals two. So we are now using loop structures to help control the way that our lights are blinking. I'm gonna add a few comments into the code now, and then after I'm done that, pause the video and take a second just to make sure that you understand what our code is doing. So you'll see that we've got some comments in there now. Feel free to look them over if you feel that you're still a little confused as to how the loop structures actually work. Great job on the main lesson. Now let's have a quick look at the extension. So in the extension, it's gonna ask the user how many times they want the yellow and how many times they want the green to blink before it actually does the blinks. So if I enter four for yellow and then I enter three for green, then it should actually blink the yellow four times, blink the green three times, and then ask the user again so that they can put in their values for the next set of blinks. Great job with the extension. Now we're on to the challenge. For lesson four challenge, we're gonna get rid of user input and our LEDs are gonna start by blinking once each, then twice, then three times each. And this pattern is gonna continue indefinitely until the Arduino doesn't have power anymore. 
We're going to do this without any user input. So you need to make use of variables in your for and your while loops to help allow these lights to continue to grow in their number of blinks. Good luck on the challenge, and I look forward to seeing you back here for the Arduino Basics tutorials in lesson number five. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date as we continue to roll out this tutorial series. Thanks for watching, and happy looping, looping, looping.